Hey everybody, my name is Allison Ostrander and I am the Director of Risk Tolerance here at Simpler Trading. And in today's video, I wanna talk about a potential earnings trade around Lulu. There are two different ways that I would look to trade this depending on what action you think might happen. Earnings is tomorrow after market close. So keep in mind that I would base this off the price level going into the close tomorrow. So if we're up 20 points, right, you might adjust the strikes that we're about to look at 20 points higher and lower respectively. Um, just keep that in mind. But let's pretend that currently right now, we are about to go into the close of the day right before the earnings announcement uh, after market. So if that was the case, there are two different ways I'd look to play this. The first way is if I'm not anticipating a more volatile move, um, which I would say isn't the usual case for Lulu. As you can see, Lulu typically, at least out of the last three out of four earnings, has seen a bit more volatility around its earnings announcement. Last earnings, we had a strong gap and move lower to the downside. The earnings prior to that actually had a strong gap higher, pulled back a little bit that day, but then kept running to the upside for the remainder of the week. Here, this earnings, right, this is the one that was a bit more consolidated, so it acted a bit like a non-event. And then on this earnings, we had a gap up and then a strong continuation higher for the next couple of days. So as you can see, it's usually more volatile, but let's say you think it's going to act like this one did back in June of last year, where it's more a non-event. Well, if that's the case, usually the best way to trade those is with some sort of, they did a case style trade, where you benefit in the crush of premium that's about to occur. Um, and one way to look at doing that while being very mindful of your risk and still staying within the anticipated range is with an iron fly. So the anticipated range for this week, which of course encompasses the earnings announcement, is roughly $25, right? $24.71 at the moment. So we'll just round it up to 25. And right now we're trading around $13. So 25 points to the upside would be around 338. And 25 points to the downside would be a around, let's see if I can do my mental math here, um, would be around 285-ish, 287.50-ish range. So let's just go ahead and pick it a pin, right? We're kind of in the middle of our two strikes here. So I am going to go ahead and just choose the 315 strike to make math simpler for myself. And we'll go 25 points roughly up from here. So uh, 315 plus 25 would be around 340. And then 25 points lower would be around three, 290. Um, and as you can see here, the credit that we're getting on this trade is about 1790. So not a bad amount of premium. The risk, of course, is a little bit high for what I personally like to look at. It's 710. Now, those of you with larger accounts, that risk might be well within your tolerance. Um, but the reason why I look at doing something like this is because let's say it kind of stays within the, within the anticipated move, right? We have a slight gap up, but then it kind of hits that range and starts to pull back. Well, the iron butterfly, the iron fly, when it's like this, would still benefit from that crush in theta decay. And it keeps your longs within that anticipated range. So you give plenty of room for the price to move and still stay within um, the range it's anticipated to trade in, right? So that's the first way I would look at doing this. The second way that I'd look at doing this is by doing something more off the volatility, right? So if you think it's going to trade as the prior three out of four earnings has tr have traded, where we have a bit more of a gap and volatile move, maybe outside the anticipated range or, or at least into the anticipated range, then you might consider playing that way with two debit style broken wing butterflies. And this is the way I would personally lean towards playing this earnings, just because like I mentioned, Lulu does at least out of the last several earnings, have seen a bit more volatility than not. So to do the debit uh, butterfly setup, 
we want our debit spread to be wider than the credit spread on the butterfly, but we still want to be within that anticipated range. So once again, right around 340 is that anticipated range for where we're currently trading. So 330, 340 is a 10 point debit spread. And let's go ahead and match that with a five point credit spread. So this creates a debit style broken wing butterfly. The benefit of this style trade is if you go within the anticipated range and hit your short strike, great. It's an excellent risk versus reward scenario. But if let's say the move is bigger than anticipated, right? Or it really starts to run the next few days, because keep in mind, we'll still have time until the end of the week for this trade idea. Then if it goes completely in the money, it can still allow for a profit. But remember, we don't know which way earnings could go. We've seen gap moves in both directions. So we'd want to set this up for both the call side and the put side. So right now, the call side with the 330, 340, 345 strikes is about a $1.70 cost basis. When we flip over to the put side, once again, around, let's just say 290, we'll price it out there. It's about a dollar eighty-five. It's a little bit more than I usually like for both of these butterflies. Let's just adjust the strikes a little bit lower here, and that looks a bit better. So that's about a dollar forty-ish. So not quite on the pin for the twenty-five point range. Um, arguably, if we actually go with where we're actually trading at, at the moment, which is three thirteen. Minus 25, that's around 288. So arguably we're a bit closer on the pin, right? It's right in between these two levels. Um, but the idea is one side of this trade cost us about $1.70. The other side of this trade is jumping around a bit, but let's just say we pay $1.50 for it. Jumping around on the mark. Um, oops, sorry, I meant to add that together. So $1.70 plus $1.50 is a 320 cost basis. Now, usually when my difference of spread width, meaning I have 10 points on the debit spread, five points on the credit spread, so the difference of the two is five, usually I like to keep my cost basis at or below $3 because if one side really starts to go deep in the money, right, let's just say because of resistance and the bearish divergent bars, this thing just falls apart and it starts selling for whatever reason. And we go completely in the money. Well, our profit potential would be our five point spread width difference minus our total cost basis on both butterflies, which we just went through is 320. So it's about a 180 profit, maybe not the best risk versus reward. It's still over a 50% return, but that's why I usually like to keep it at or below $3, right? If you have a $3 cost basis, it goes completely in the money. It's still a $2 profit. Keep in mind though, on if you get the pin, right? The pin minus your total cost basis on both sides is actually 680. So once again, not a bad risk versus reward off a 320 cost basis. So that's one way you could play um, for a more volatile move, maybe still keeping within that anticipated range. But the idea that we're going to get some sort of gap move like we did here um, or some sort of volatility, maybe following through with the announcement after the gap move to really benefit. Um, so that is. Those are the two trade ideas I'd consider around Lulu for earnings. And like I said, personally, I'd lean more towards the two debit broken wing butterflies to play off the volatility. That is my time for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. As always, may the trade be with you, my fellow Jedis, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Bye. Hey, Allison Ostrander here, Director of Risk Tolerance at Simpler Trading. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and comment down below to help us out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can get notified when we release our next video. And if you want to watch us trade in real time using our own money, go to simplertrading.com to learn how to sign up. As always, may the trade be with you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.